Hi, I'm Don Stegall of RC Pro. That's rcpro.org because I don't have the .com address. Um, RC Pro is a pylon racing organization and we created the Club 40 racing class. It's going to be raced at the 2016 Pylon Nationals. Club 40 is for everyone from intermediates to expert pilots. Um, we hope you'll come join us. Uh, check out the club40nats.com website and you'll find more information about it. There's also going to be Warbird Racing at the 2016 Nats and the Warbird Racing at the, at the 2016 Nats is going to be on the Friday and Saturday uh, unfortunately, Warbird and Club 40 overlap, so you'll have to pick between one or the other. But I've been working with YS engines a lot lately. Um, I had a YS63 and a Dago Red, and it was a quite powerful and fun airplane to fly. And I put the engine back on the test stand uh, recently, and it ran just like it did. Um, when I was flying it a lot on the airplane. Very powerful. Um, for those not familiar with YS engines, the four strokes are actually supercharged. Uh, this adds a level of complexity to the internals of the engine and makes them a little bit more expensive than some other brands, but they're also significantly more powerful. So, I have um, several Facebook pages that are mostly pylon racing related but a couple of them are related to the software that I write and um, I have apps for Android, Windows Phone and Windows 10 with apps coming for iPhone and iPad hope you'll check out my Facebook page and uh, the different pages that I have but let me uh, start talking about this engine that's in front of me this is a beautiful piece of machinery. The YSDZ185 has the supercharger in the crankcase and it has the intake facing up, which is kind of unusual for four strokes because the air comes in and it goes into the crankcase and it comes back from the carburetor through the intake tube into the uh, intake valve and on this engine it also has a pump that pumps fuel back into the carburetor and it also has a line where it directly injects the fuel into the cylinder of the engine. So this is a quite complex piece of machinery, but it doesn't use a pressurized fuel system like some of the other YS4 strokes. Um, so you don't have to worry about uh, tanks having to hold up to extra stress and that kind of thing because the fuel is actually being pumped from the fuel tank into the carburetor and into the direct injection. The shaft on this engine is a 8mm by 1 thread and this Dubro spinner nut which I like to use when I'm breaking in engines so they get maximum airflow Another thing about this engine is that it doesn't use muffler pressure because of, the, because of the fuel system not being pressurized and because of the fuel pump pumping the fuel you don't have to have pressure on the exhaust or on the muffler on the exhaust. Right now I have a header pipe which a muffler can go on to but this engine is most commonly used in world-class pattern competition and 
people use headers that wrap around and come to the center of the crankcase so they can use a tuned muffler or a tuned pipe depending on the um, situation and I'm actually looking forward to potentially trying one of those mufflers because I fly up fields where noise is an issue and I don't want to put a real restricting muffler on it. So if the muffler that's available um, reduces the power a lot, I'll investigate the uh, tune pipes. Most of my Facebook pages are pylon related and uh, I'm mostly known for my work with uh, pylon racing even though I don't fly in the um, AMA tiers of racing at the moment. Uh, Club 40 took my focus away from AMA style racing after about 2005 or 2006 and uh, I've just recently gotten back into focusing on AMA three-pole racing. But I'm enjoying two-pole racing and in two-pole warbird racing, um, one thing people like is a variety of aircraft. I found this out uh, kind of the hard way. In 2012, I proposed a giant scale racing class based on a single P-51 giant scale airplane I heard from people that they wanted um, multiple airplane choices and uh, we opened up the airplane choices and then we started hearing from people that they wanted more engine choice so we have opened up the engines to any engine under 40.99 cc's and with this being a 1.85 cubic inch engine it's well under the 40 cc limit but I've been working with 30 to 35 cc gasoline engines and they can typically turn a 18 by 8 prop at 7800 to 8300 RPMs well I've tried a tune muffler and run an 18 by 10 and gotten um, into the upper 8000s um, but that was just an 18 by 10. I've talked to Richard Verano at YS Engines about what props to use on this engine. And I've also heard from other people via Facebook and other means that I need to go with an 18 by 12 or 17 by 13 prop or the engine will be revving too high. Uh, it produces... Uh, maximum power in the 7,000 to 8,000 RPM range and uh, you want to prop it so that it runs in that range. So when I put it on the test stand, this engine's already been run at YS uh, so it won't be a true break-in but it hasn't, it hasn't been run enough to be fully broken in. But Richard recommended that I start with the 17 by 13 since the 18 by 10 was the highest pitch 18 inch prop I have. So I'm interested in seeing how this engine performs against the uh, gas engines that are in the same uh, size range and against other four strokes. I've run a Sato 180 and it would turn an 18 by 8 at about 7800 RPMs, which is not bad. But based on my knowledge of the YS63 versus the Sato 82, uh, the YS63 outturns a Sato 82. And I expect this 185 is going to significantly outturn the uh, Sato 180. So we'll see if it gets me into the range I need to be in to run it in Warbird 80 racing. And it has been primarily used for pattern, so I'm going a little outside of the uh, normal use of the engine, although I have heard from another racer that he's run a 16x16 16 16 prop with 50% nitro and got an extremely good performance out of the engine. I don't know what size of airplane it was, but... Um, I know this guy goes fast and um, I'm really looking forward to getting this engine on the test stand 
and seeing what it'll do. Uh, speaking of test stands, this is the PSP test stand base and these are the lug mounts that fit on the base. Uh, they're adjustable and you can also put um, plates for gasoline engines that have uh, back plate or radial mounting and um, this test stand is plenty strong to hold this engine. I'll actually be using a PSP vibration dampening test stand because that's what I have on my tripod test stand. My tripod test stand was designed to be portable. I have a PSP post in my yard but my yard ends in a floodplain and we've had a lot of rain and it's muddy as it can be around my post so I'm using my tripod test stand in my driveway um, even though I don't like running engines close to the house just for safety purposes, animals, whatever. But I'll be getting this engine on the test stand and I'll get to see what it does with that 17 by 13 and if it's not what we expect then I'll try an 18 by 10 uh, and uh, be very careful about over revving the engine. If you have any questions about this engine, contact YS Engines at support at ysengines.net. ysengines.net is the website for YS USA and uh, they'll be glad to talk to you about the engines, make recommendations, um, help you with um, any issues you may have that the manuals don't cover and um, they have a new website coming at ys-engines.com so you can watch the progress of the new website and they will be selling direct they're currently selling direct but uh, the website doesn't um, really indicate that all that well so you can buy these engines direct from YS in the US and if you can't find the engine at one of the usual YS engine suppliers, contact YS at ysengines.net. The contact page has the phone number and they'll be glad to talk to you about the engines and they'll be glad to sell them to you. They have very good part support. Um, I've seen the parts list and it's an extensive list. So they have replacement parts for any part of the engine you may need a part for and um, they offer excellent service uh, they refurbish engines they repair engines so your investment in a YS engine doesn't end when you uh, when you spend your money um, these engines are a little bit more expensive than the gasoline engines in the same power range um, but by the time you add a uh, tuned muffler or tuned pipe and a header and other things to bring the performance up to this engine, uh, you may wind up spending more money than if you've gotten one of these. These engines do run on glow fuel. They need to have at least 20% synthetic oil in the fuel. 20% um, nitro is kind of the minimum. Uh, you can go up to 30, 40, 50 percent. Some people even run 60 percent. Some people also blow the tops off the heads of the engines pushing them too hard because like all things mechanical you can push them too far. Hope you've enjoyed the video. Uh, stay tuned for the break-in and running video and we'll see you at the test stand.